I was kicked out of my doctor family over false drug accusations. I became a successful designer. Now they want to make amends, but I'm giving them a taste of their own medicine. I, 31 female, come from a family of doctors spanning several generations. My great-grandfather was a pioneering surgeon, and both my grandparents were respected physicians in their small town. My parents continued this legacy, my father, 62 male, is a renowned cardiologist, and my mother, 59 female, is a distinguished pediatrician. Growing up, there was never any question about what career path my older sister Susan, 34 female, and I would follow. It was simply assumed we'd become doctors too. From a young age, our parents instilled in us the importance of academic excellence and dedication to medicine. Our home was filled with medical journals and anatomy models. Instead of bedtime stories, we'd often get impromptu biology lessons. Family vacations usually involved visiting medical conferences or historically significant hospitals. Susan thrived in this environment. She was naturally gifted, always at the top of her class, and seemed destined for medical greatness. I vividly remember her winning the state science fair at age 12 with a project on cardiovascular health. Our parents were ecstatic, already envisioning her following in our father's footsteps as a cardiologist. I, on the other hand, struggled more with academics. While I did well enough, I wasn't the prodigy Susan was. Science and math didn't come as easily to me. I was more drawn to creative pursuits, I loved art class and spent hours sketching in my free time. But whenever I tried to show my parents my drawings, they'd gently redirect me to my studies, saying art was a nice hobby but not a viable career. This dynamic created a lot of tension between Susan and me from a young age. She seemed to resent the fact that I wasn't as passionate about medicine as she was. I remember one incident when I was 14 and Susan was 17. I had spent weeks working on a painting for an art competition at school. The night before it was due, I found it torn to shreds in my room. Susan claimed our dog had gotten to it, but I knew she was lying. Our parents brushed off my accusations, saying I should have been more careful with my little project and focus on my upcoming biology test instead. Despite my challenges and secret desire to pursue art, I worked incredibly hard and managed to get into medical school, largely to please my parents. By then, Susan was already thriving in her residency at a prestigious hospital. I quickly realized that medicine wasn't my passion, but I felt trapped. My parents had invested so much in my education, both financially and emotionally. The thought of disappointing them was unbearable. In my second year of med school, I hit a breaking point. I was struggling to keep up with the workload and feeling increasingly depressed. One night, after a particularly grueling exam, I broke down and confided in Susan about my doubts. I told her I was considering dropping out to pursue my true interest in art and graphic design. She seemed supportive at first, listening sympathetically and even suggesting some art therapy programs that might help me de-stress. Looking back, I realized she saw an opportunity. A week later, Susan went to our parents and told them I was failing all my classes, abusing prescription drugs, and planning to drop out. None of this was true. I had never touched drugs and while I was struggling, I wasn't failing. But Susan had always been the golden child, so our parents believed her without question. They confronted me in a family intervention, refusing to listen to my denials. The situation spiraled quickly. My parents cut me off financially and kicked me out of the house. They told extended family and family friends that I was an addict and a failure. Susan played the concerned sister, saying she was only trying to help. My reputation was ruined overnight. Even my childhood best friend, who was also in med school, stopped returning my calls. I tried to continue in med school, but the stress and lack of financial support made it impossible. I ended up dropping out and moving to a new city to start over. It took years of struggle to build a life for myself. I lived in a tiny, run-down apartment and worked multiple jobs, waiting tables, walking dogs, anything I could find. Eventually, I saved enough to enroll in community college classes for graphic design. During this time, I lost touch with most friends and family members who believed Susan's lies. The few times I tried to reach out and explain my side of the story, I was shut down or accused of making excuses. It was a lonely, difficult period. There were many nights I cried myself to sleep, wondering if I'd made a huge mistake by not just pushing through med school. But slowly, things started to turn around. I threw myself into my design studies, often staying up all night working on projects. My professors noticed my dedication and talent. One of them connected me with an internship at a small design firm. It wasn't glamorous work, mostly creating flyers and basic websites, but it was a foot in the door. Over the next few years, I worked my way up in the design world. I took on freelance projects, built a portfolio, and eventually landed a job at a respected agency. It was challenging juggling full-time work with finishing my degree, but I was finally doing something I loved. Now, eight years later, I've established a successful career as a graphic designer. I recently started my own small design studio, which is doing well. I'm in a good place personally and professionally. I have a supportive group of friends who feel like family. I thought I'd put my family drama behind me. Last month, out of the blue, I got a call from my mom. I almost didn't answer, we haven't spoken in years except for the occasional terse holiday text. When I did pick up, she was crying, barely coherent. Through her sobs, I managed to understand that Susan had finally admitted to lying about me all those years ago. Apparently, Susan had been struggling with her own issues and finally broke down in therapy. 
She confessed everything to our parents, how she'd made up the stories about me abusing drugs and failing classes, how she'd known I was just stressed and considering a career change but had blown it out of proportion. She admitted to being jealous of my potential escape from the medical world and afraid of losing our parents' attention. My mom begged me to come home and reconcile with the family. She said they were all devastated by what Susan had done and wanted to make amends. She kept repeating how sorry she was for not believing me, for letting things go so far. Susan herself called me a few days later, sobbing and apologizing profusely. She said she'd been racked with guilt for years but had been too ashamed to come clean. I told them all that I needed time to process this. The truth is, I'm furious. Susan's lies derailed my entire life. She cost me my education, my family relationships, and years of struggle. Our parents enabled her by believing her over me without any real evidence. Now they expect me to just forgive and forget? I don't want a relationship with any of them. I've built a good life without them, and the thought of letting them back in feels threatening to my heart one stability. But my extended family is pressuring me to reconcile, saying I need to be the bigger person and that family is too important to throw away. Susan keeps calling and texting, begging for forgiveness. My parents are offering to pay off my student loans from design school as a gesture of apology. Part of me wants to tell them all to go to hell. Another part wonders if I'm being too harsh, if I should at least hear them out. So Reddit, Ida for refusing to forgive my sister and reconcile with my family after all this time? Update 1. Thank you all for your comments and support. I've spent the last couple of weeks thinking hard about this situation and trying to process my emotions. After much deliberation, I decided to meet with Susan in person. As angry as I was, I felt I needed to look her in the eye and hear her explanation. We agreed to meet at a neutral cafe in my city. I chose a quiet corner table, arriving early to calm my nerves. When Susan walked in, I was struck by how different she looked from the confident, put-together sister I remembered. She seemed smaller somehow with dark circles under her eyes and a nervous energy about her. She broke down crying almost immediately upon sitting down, apologizing over and over. Between sobs, Susan explained that she'd been consumed by jealousy and insecurity for years. Apparently, she'd been struggling with depression and anxiety throughout med school and residency. The pressure to be perfect, to live up to our family's legacy, had been crushing her. When I confided in her about wanting to leave medicine, she said she felt a mix of envy and panic. She envied my courage to consider a different path, but panicked at the thought of being left alone to carry the family's medical torch. She claimed she never meant for things to go so far. She said she just wanted to scare me into staying in med school, thinking our parents would stage an intervention and then everything would go back to normal. She didn't expect them to cut me off completely or for the situation to spiral as it did. I asked her why she didn't come clean sooner when she saw how badly things had spiraled. She said she was too ashamed and afraid of losing our parents' trust and support. She convinced herself that I would be fine and bounce back quickly. As time went on, it became harder and harder to admit the truth. Susan also revealed some things about her own struggles that I hadn't known. She'd been secretly seeing a therapist for years, battling anxiety and imposter syndrome. She'd even considered leaving medicine herself several times but felt trapped by expectations and guilt. While I appreciate her honesty, I'm not sure I can ever forgive her. The damage she caused is just too great. I told her this, and she said she understood. She didn't expect forgiveness, but wanted me to know the full truth. She gave me a letter detailing everything she'd done and taking full responsibility. She said I could share it with anyone who still believed her original lies. After meeting with Susan, I also spoke with my parents on the phone. They were extremely apologetic and emotional. My mom could barely get through the call without breaking down. They admitted they should have trusted me and investigated further instead of just believing Susan. My mom said the guilt has been eating her alive. They offered again to pay off my student loans and even buy me a house as a gesture of apology. I told them I don't want their money. I've worked hard to get where I am, and I'm proud of that. Accepting their money now feels wrong, like it would somehow invalidate my struggles and achievements. My dad brought up the idea of family therapy, saying he wants us all to heal together. But I'm not sure I'm ready for that level of involvement. The thought of sitting in a room with all of them, rehashing the past, feels overwhelming. I'm still processing everything. While I appreciate the apologies, I'm not ready to let any of them back into my life. The betrayal and years of struggle are hard to move past. I've told them I need space and asked them not to contact me for a while. Some extended family members are still pressuring me to reconcile, saying life is short and family is everything. My aunt called, telling me about how she regrets not reconciling with her own sister before she passed away. She urged me not to make the same mistake. But I feel like I need to protect the life and emotional stability I've worked so hard to build. My chosen family of friends has been incredibly supportive. My best friend reminded me that I don't owe anyone forgiveness, especially not on their timeline. For now, I'm focusing on self-care and processing my emotions. I've started journaling again, something I used to do in college. It's helping me sort through my complicated feelings about the situation. I'm also throwing myself into work, using my art as an outlet for my emotions. I've started a personal project, a series of abstract paintings that represent my journey over the past eight years. It's been cathartic to express my pain and growth through art. Am I wrong for wanting to keep my distance despite their apologies? Should I be more open to reconciliation? I'm still unsure about the right path forward. Update 2. It's been about a month since my last update. I wanted to share some developments in this complicated situation. 
Despite my request for space, Susan has continued reaching out. She sent me a long email detailing how she's been volunteering at a youth mentorship program to make amends for how she treated me. She wrote about working with young people who are struggling with family expectations and career pressures, saying it's opened her eyes to the damage such expectations can cause. Susan also mentioned that she's considering leaving medicine to become a therapist, inspired by how therapy has helped her. She talked about wanting to help other people work through family trauma and find their true paths in life. While I appreciate that she's trying to better herself, it feels a bit performative. I can't shake the feeling that she's trying to paint herself as the reformed villain in some redemption story. Part of me wonders if this is genuine growth or just another way for her to center herself in the narrative. I haven't responded to her email. My parents have mostly respected my wishes for space, with one notable exception. My dad showed up unannounced at my workplace last week. He said he just wanted to see where I worked and how I was doing. I was in a client meeting so my colleague told him I was unavailable. This bothered me a lot. I feel like my boundaries are still not being respected. It brought back memories of how they would often dismiss my feelings or desires when I was younger, always assuming they knew best. I sent a firm email to both my parents reiterating my need for space and asking them not to show up uninvited again. On a more positive note, I've started seeing a therapist to work through my feelings about all of this. It's been helpful to have a neutral party to talk to. She's helping me process my anger and set healthy boundaries. We've been exploring how my family dynamics have shaped my relationships and self-perception over the years. I've also reconnected with a couple of old friends from med school. After hearing my side of the story, they were horrified by what Susan and my parents did. One friend, Sarah, even cried and apologized for believing the rumors about me back then. It's been healing to have my experiences validated by people who knew me back then. Sarah shared some insights about what was happening in med school after I left. Apparently, there had been a lot of gossip and speculation about my departure. Some people, including a few professors, had questioned the official story, finding it hard to believe I would suddenly become a drug addict. But Susan's status as a star student and our family's reputation had quashed most doubts. Reconnecting with these old friends has made me realize how much I missed having people in my life who knew me before all this happened. It's comforting to be around people who remember the old me, the aspiring artist who got sidetracked into medicine. In terms of my career, I've been pouring myself into my work. I recently landed a big project designing branding for a new tech startup. It's challenging and exciting work, pushing me to grow as a designer. There's a part of me that feels vindicated by this success, proving that I made the right choice in pursuing my passion despite all the obstacles. For now, I'm focusing on my work and my mental health. I'm still not ready to have my family in my life, and I'm trying to be okay with that decision. It's hard to shake years of conditioning about the importance of family, but I'm learning that sometimes chosen family can be more valuable than blood relatives. I'm taking things one day at a time, trying to balance processing my past with building my future. The road ahead still feels uncertain, but I'm proud of how far I've come. Update 3. It's been six months since this all started, and I wanted to provide a final update on where things stand. I've maintained my distance from my immediate family, which has been challenging but ultimately the right decision for my mental health. Susan eventually stopped reaching out after I didn't respond to her messages. My parents send an occasional text, which I acknowledge but don't engage with beyond basic politeness. The most significant development is that I've started building a relationship with my maternal grandmother. She reached out after hearing the full story from my parents. Unlike the rest of the family, she respected my boundaries and simply sent a heartfelt letter expressing her regret for believing the lies about me. We've been talking regularly on the phone. She's apologized for not being there for me and has been a supportive, non-judgmental presence. It's been healing to have at least one family member in my corner. She shared stories about her own struggles in a medical family, including her initial resistance to my grandfather's career choice. These conversations have helped me understand my family's dynamics better. In terms of my career, I recently landed a major client that's really elevating my design business. It's a well-known national brand, and the exposure from this project has led to several other exciting opportunities. The success feels especially sweet knowing I've achieved it entirely on my own merit. I'm still in therapy, working through the complex emotions tied to my family. My therapist has been helping me navigate feelings of guilt and obligation that still crop up sometimes. We've been exploring how to set healthy boundaries without completely closing myself off from potential reconciliation in the future. One unexpected outcome of this situation is that I've started mentoring young artists at a local community center. Working with these aspiring creatives, many of whom face family pressure to pursue more practical careers, has been incredibly rewarding. It's given me a sense of purpose and helped me transform my painful experiences into something positive. I've also been more open with my friends about my family history. Sharing my story has deepened these relationships and shown me how much support I have in my chosen family. A few weeks ago, my friends threw me a family dinner to celebrate my recent career success. It was a powerful reminder that family isn't just about blood relations. As for my biological family, things remain complicated. Last month, I received an invitation to a cousin's wedding. It would be the first family event I'd potentially attend since everything happened. I'm still undecided about whether to go. On one hand, I miss some of my extended family and it could be a chance to reconnect. On the other, I'm worried about the drama it might cause and how I'd handle seeing my parents and Susan. My grandmother has gently encouraged me to consider attending, saying it could be a low-pressure way to test the waters with family interactions. She's offered to be my buffer if I decide to go. I appreciate her support, but I'm still unsure.
In the meantime, I'm continuing to focus on my personal growth and career. I've started taking art classes again, something I hadn't done since before med school. It's been incredibly fulfilling to reconnect with that part of myself. I'm even considering putting together an exhibition of my work, combining my graphic design skills with traditional art. As for my relationship with my immediate family, I'm taking it day by day. While I'm not actively seeking reconciliation, I'm also not completely closing that door. If they continue to respect my boundaries and show genuine change over time, I might be open to slowly rebuilding some kind of relationship. But for now, I'm prioritizing my own well-being and the life I've built for myself. To those who followed my story, thank you for your support and advice. It's been a difficult journey, but I'm proud of how far I've come. I'm learning that healing isn't linear and that it's okay to take all the time I need. Whatever the future holds with my family, I know I'm strong enough to handle it.